Hey guys, it's Kyle, KC Electrics. You can't tell from my face, I am totally and utterly wiped out right now. I have been working in the 95 degree heat for probably five or six hours now on the guitar build. Things are turning out really awesome. I'm super stoked about the progress that was made today. Um, I can't wait to show you guys here in this video. But first off, I want to tell you a little bit about it. I started on the hardware side and fitted everything up, got all the wire channels routed. Um, I also did all the fasteners for all the hardware to actually attach to the body. I did the through holes for the strings. It turned out pretty decent. Um, if, if you guys have ever tried to build a tele before, the, the through holes for the strings can be a little tricky to get perfectly straight. And you'll see that mine are uh, pretty good, I would say, but I could have done a little bit better in the future. Hopefully I will. Um, the other thing I worked on that I was not expecting to, but I decided to just go ahead and push through because hard work pays off, is the level fret installation, crowning, bevel on the edges, everything to do with the frets. Got all done today. I was super happy with that, and uh, it turned out looking really cool. So, uh, guys, this is a lot of hard work for me. Not only do I have to build a guitar, but I also got to do all the video editing and try and find soundtracks and make it look halfway decent for you. And I love doing that, and it kind of brings out my creative side even more than just the guitar building. But man, it is a lot of work. So if you don't mind, please hit that subscribe button right now. Um, it just helps me out, and it, it lets me know that you guys care that I'm actually creating this content, and it makes me want to put a little bit more effort into every single video. And I, I just love doing it. So I want to continue, but I can only do that if I have subscribers. So please, again, if you can, hit that subscribe button for me. It just, it, it would mean the world to me. So let's get on to the video. I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so I'm going to start here by clamping down my body so that I can drill out the wire channels through the pickup cavities and into the, the side chamber there so that I can get to the switch and the knobs. Now, you have to use a long drill bit for this. This is a 5 16th drill bit. You could use a quarter inch, but the 5 16th is a little bit bigger, lets you get all three wires through. And you need an especially long one, obviously, so that you can reach all the way to the back cavity through the neck pocket. So you can see me doing that here. Um, it's not too difficult. You just have to be careful that you're going in straight. Now, some people could put this onto a larger drill press. Mine's not big enough, so I have to just do it by hand. And really, the only fear here is that you actually go through the top of the guitar, which would be really bad. So uh, just make sure that you're going in straight here and that you don't go through the top at an angle. Other than that, it's pretty simple, actually. And then here I'm drilling in a side hole that will go into the right cavity of the guitar and this will allow me to get all the wires to the actual switch and knobs here on the control panel. So pretty easy. Um, this one you have to do at an angle so it's a little bit tougher but as long as you have a, a pilot hole it, it should go pretty smoothly. Now I'm putting the template back on the top here because uh, I've drawn a little line of where the input jack should be. And so I'm just transferring that onto the body and then I'm going to go through and find the very center of the body so that it looks uh, nice and even from the top and bottom when I actually drill the hole. So I'm just measuring that out here and then in ensuring that I have the center. Again, I have to clamp down the work body to the table so that it doesn't move too much when I'm actually drilling the hole here. And I'm going to use a 7 8 um, Forstner bit for this. The input jack is actually a 7 8 um, mountain hole and then it has a little lip on it that grabs the body from the outside and I'm using actually a more modern version than the original because they can become loose over time so the one that I'm going to use is actually um, got two screw holes that go right into the body on the sides of the jack so it's pretty secure you know you don't usually have any issue with these when you're using a Forstner bit and going through end grain like this you typically want to stop every once in a while and just clean out the hole, clean out all the bits so that you don't burn up the wood or your uh, drill bit. And then just go through with some sandpaper on the inside to clean up all the, the blowout on the inside. Now this is the first part where I start to assemble some of the hardware onto the guitar. And specifically right here I'm just making sure that everything fits. And then I'm aligning the, the bridge, um, I guess hardware. To the guitar so that I can find out where the the holes need to be for the through holes on the strings. This part's the most tricky part of building a Telecaster or really any guitar that has uh, through holes for the strings. You want them to be pretty straight on the back of the guitar um, otherwise it becomes noticeable and you know you, if you have a little bit of waviness or something uh, it, it can really throw off the, the back side of the guitar. 
So you want to make sure that you take your time with this. Now, in order to actually mount the bridge, you have to take off all the, the saddles for the strings. And so that's what I did just there. And, and now I'm aligning it and making sure that I have it nice and straight relative to the center line. I'm marking the holes for where I need to drill the mountain hardware. Always double check here. So here I'm actually drawing out those holes. Now these are the holes for the fasteners that hold the bridge to the guitar body, not the string through. We'll do that next. You want to have a hard mount for when you drill the actual th uh, string holes. Um, so that way they're actually straight and perfectly parallel with the actual hardware. And you just do this on a drill press. Make sure you set the depth. That's what that little piece of tape is for. And uh, just go right on the pilot holes and, and you should be good to go. So here I'm putting the hardware back on and just double checking. And then I'm going to actually put two screws in the sides uh, just to hold down the bridge. And what you just saw there is a little bit of oil. I actually put that right on the, the actual um, fastener before I put it in. It just helps lubricate the screw as it goes into the wood and make sure that uh, you're able to get it out relatively easily without it binding up and cracking the wood. So you can see here, I'm just tightening those down before I actually drill the holes. Now you can just go with a 1 8 bit and you can drill straight through. Now you actually don't drill all the way through on the middle holes. So you only drill all the way through on the left and the right hand hole. Um, so I'm, on this one, I'm not actually drilling all the way through and you'll see that I go back and I actually drill the left and the right hole all the way through the guitar body. And the reason you do that is, uh, you'll see, we'll take off the hardware here and we'll actually transfer it to the back of the guitar to better align it. And so here I'm actually removing it. So this is the back of the guitar now. And I just used two 1 8 uh, drill bits here to align it. And then I marked my holes for the rest of them. And this is where uh, the alignment comes into play on the back of the guitar. And you can see here, I'm using a brad point drill bit and I'm lining it up carefully to uh, start marking out where the actual ferrules will, will actually go in the guitar body. Now, there is a better way to do this and it's to actually put a pin on the, the top side of the guitar while you're drilling so you perfectly align these. I did not do it this time and I'm a little upset that I didn't take the time to go ahead and make a little jig for it because again the the string holes they came out pretty good you can see here um, but there's one that was just slightly off and it's gonna annoy me just because I'm always gonna see it but you know I think most people won't even notice here I'm actually going ahead and putting on some of the the tuner gear on the neck and you have to do this up front before you do all your finishing stuff just to double check that everything's aligned and then also the biggest thing is you have to drill little pilot holes for uh, the fasteners that hold the tuners on the back of the neck so here i'm just loosely putting them on i'm not tightening these down really hard um, just enough so they stay in place and then here i'm aligning them and making sure they're all straight with each other uh, before i mark the holes for where the fasteners need to go And then just mark those out and drill right there. Uh, make sure you don't go through the body, obviously, and uh, try and keep them straight as possible. Uh, but this is super easy. Uh, this is just a 1 16th drill bit, so it's super small. Okay, with all that done, it's time to do the final sanding on the body. And you can see here I'm using the spindle sander to get started on the edges. And I'm just cleaning up the, the mold lines and, and just getting everything nice and smooth. This starts out with, a, I believe it's 80 grit or maybe it's 120 grit. But just something kind of rough to get it, you know, uh, shaped out. Get all the burn marks off. Uh, just get it prepped for finishing. And then what I'll do is I'll go back over the entire guitar. And I'll, I'll progress from 120 grit up to probably 220 and then up to 300 and then eventually all the way up to 400 grit. Now you probably don't have to go any higher than 220, but I'm going to be doing a natural finish on this wood. So I want to make sure that it's perfectly smooth and um, I don't have any issues with, you know, any scratches or anything on the, the final guitar. 
So some of it's with an orbital sander and then uh, eventually I go back with my hand and, and just use some sandpaper to get everything nice and smooth. You can see there a really clean line uh, between the maple and the mahogany. It looks really awesome. Of course I have to go back over the neck doing the same thing. Um, before you saw that I was you know just kind of rough shaping it with sandpaper but here I'm actually going back and progressing through the grits uh, to get to a, a final product. And then on the fretboard itself I go back through with a, a radius sandboard and I smoothed everything out to 400 grit so it's perfectly smooth. And then I get it going on the fretwork. Now this is a pretty simple process and I'll have some videos in the future of how you actually do this but um, you just want to support the neck and then hammer in on the left and right side of each fret before you go to the middle and that's so that the ends don't pop out. Um, it's pretty easy once you do one or two, so I suggest that you practice it if you've never done it before. Um, but really, it's, it's not complicated, and um, it, it seems scary at first, but once again, once you do one or two, it's really not that bad. After you're done with all the frets, you have to go through and nip the ends off. And so here I have a special set of um, trim uh, nippers, I guess. I'm not really sure what the exact word for them is. Uh, but you just go through and you can flush trim them to the side of the guitar. Now, you won't get perfectly flat with these. And what you have to do is you have to go back with a flat file and just file it down. So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, just going through. Be careful so you don't scratch the wood. But you can go back and clean sand it a little bit. And you'll know when you actually hit the wood because the metal makes a much different sound on the file than the actual wood does. So it, it becomes pretty obvious when you actually are doing it in the shop. And then here I'm applying approximately a 30 to 40 degree bevel on the fret ends. And this is to add comfortability to, to the player when they're actually moving their hands up and down the neck. Uh, you don't want sharp you know, right hand corners because you'll feel it on your fingers and actually cut you. Um, so here I'm just using a rough file on a block that I made and, and just holding the actual um, piece at 45 degrees or so, maybe even less than that, like 40. And then here I have a little specialty file that I have to go through and on each fret end I round over all the corners and again just to help with the playability and make sure that you don't actually nick your fingers when you're playing the guitar and moving up and down the neck. This is a really long process, it's very labor intensive. Um, the total fret jobs probably a good two and a half to three hours for someone who's done it before and um, it, It's kind of the piece of the guitar that will show out the most so you want to do a good job on this and take your time Once all that's complete I go through and make sure that the neck is straight now what you didn't see on camera here is I actually um, adjusted the truss rod slightly to get the neck perfectly straight and then you go back through and you use a, a level block with some sandpaper on it to actually level out the top of the frets. Make sure they're all on a perfectly parallel plane. And a little trick is you can use a permanent marker and mark the top of the frets and then go back with the leveling uh, block and, and just go over it until all the marks are removed and you'll know then that it's perfectly level. This little triangular piece here is called a fret rocker. What you do is you put it across three different frets and it's got different size lengths on, on each side. And it, you basically are checking to see if there's anything that's out of line between the three frets. So if it rocks back and forth, you know you have to go back and level a little bit more. And if it doesn't, then you know it's perfectly level. The final step of this is taping up the fretboard to do the final crowning of the fret. So in order to get really nice frets that are really playable, you want to not only level them and bevel the edges like you've seen before, but you want to go through and actually crown the fret. And what that means is you, you basically make a small pyramid where it's just got a really tiny flat on the top, but then on the sides it's actually, it looks kind of like a pyramid, so it's, it's triangular. So there's these special files here that are actually triangular in shape. And once you've taped up the fretboard, you can go through and just file each edge until you get them in, in that perfect shape. So again, this is a pretty labor intensive process and it, it can take quite a bit of time, but you really want to do this right. This is the most important part of the guitar as far as playability. The last step while you have everything taped up is to go through and basically polish the frets. 
and you can use these little erasers that are basically um, really fine grit and you can step up I think the highest grit I go to is like a thousand grit but it polishes the frets and makes them super shiny so they look really nice so here's the final product all the frets are completed hardware's been uh, test fitted and it looks really nice I'm super excited for how this is going to turn out uh, one or two more videos until the end of this thing and I hope you guys enjoyed have a good day